Every hard-hitting, sloganeering activist who does not seem to be making progress should learn a thing or two from Christian Monsod. For more than three decades now, Christian Monsod has been quietly but effectively working to bring about social and political reforms with great results. I belong to a National Farmers Federation who has been very much helped by his advocacy and by his competence and his network. But there are four of us, national federations whom he helped. Lente was all volunteer organization to make sure that the elections, especially at the canvassing level, was uh, truthful and, and to be trusted. This was also an initiative of, uh, of Chris. Chris Monsod was in the middle of a thriving career in the private sector when events in the 1970s and the 1980s pushed him beyond the corporate world. I guess the awakening happened to a lot of people, not just us, with martial law. So that was the first awakening. It was brought to its peak of awareness and outrage, the killing of the man. So in trying to, to fight martial law, we got involved with Namfal. When it was announced that a snap election would be held in 1986, Christian Monsod was asked to become the Secretary General of NAMFRA, the citizens' arm of the Commission on Elections. He thinks of good ideas, how he can help, how he can serve. He plans what he should do. In fact, he looks at all the issues that would surround that particular idea, and then he implements, and then he calls people who can help in that particular execution of that idea. And he pursues it all the way to the end because he believes in, in the idea. As chairman of NAMFREL, Chris Monsod went to 55 provinces all over the country to organize at the grassroots level. And I came into contact with all kinds of people. The hardest ones to convince to oppose martial law and to fight for clean election, the hardest ones were the rich, because the rich were always looking for guarantees. And the poor would sit there, and then they would ask simple questions, principles. They said, ito po ba eh, maalis natin ang diktatura? And he said, yes, if we, if we fight. And then they say, sama kami siya. That's simple. Then you develop an understanding and a respect for the poor. That experience must have left an indelible mark on his mind and a soft spot in his heart for the poor. After the tremendous success of Namfrel as the country's election watchdog in 1986, Chris Monsod's involvement in government would deepen. He was one of the commissioners that drafted the new 1987 Philippine Constitution and was among those who strongly advocated the inclusion of agrarian reform in the Charter, unknown to many. Even while he was working in some of the country's biggest corporations, Chris Monsod was also deeply engaged in the agrarian reform movement. We invited him to the board and later on he became our chair. Until now, he's the chair of the Philippine Agrarian Reform Foundation for National Development. Later, you'll find him lawyering for many other cases, not only Sumilao, but later on Tebes, uh, Veles Malaga, and later on the most important case, landmark case, La Hacienda Luisita. He lawyered for the farm workers in Hacienda Luisita farm. He argued in the Supreme Court for the farmers when that decision was made finally by the Supreme Court 14-0 in favor of the distribution of the more than 4,000 hectares of Shanda Luisita. That was quite significant accomplishment. But he has other influence, especially in the area of legislation. Not only that he was able already to influence the crafting of the Constitution in favor of the farmers, but he was also very instrumental in extending the Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Program to 10 more years, then five more years. I think he was very influential also in the business community, telling them, hey, it's in our best business interest to do agrarian reform. This is not against our interests as business. 
he will just not let go. I mean, we started 1997 with the Sumilaw Farmers. We ended the case in 2010. Now, we are now in our third year in the APECO case. I can imagine if uh, <laughs> he'll still be there the next 10, 15, 20 years, he'll be still working on the APECO case. We're not finished, you know. Christian Munsod is definitely not finished. He has even expanded his advocacies to include the environment, mainly because the poor are the most affected by environmental problems. There is still much to be done, Chris Monsod believes, because nothing much has changed, especially for the country's poor. You have to be proactive about addressing the problem in Nepal because it's getting worse, not only in our country, but all over the world. And a lot of people now are becoming conscious of this. And there's a movement towards social justice. People are saying we have to change things. And we cannot believe in trickle-down democracy economics anymore. Those are failed paradigms. We know that. So we have to do something else. Our development plan calls it inclusive growth. But where is it? When you translate it, where is it? It's nowhere. So I, I think we have to engage in more radical action. No violence but we have to engage in more radical action because we need major surgery in our society. You cannot have, before you get economic change, you must have social change. That's a precondition. You look at history. There must be a new relationship between oppressor and oppressed, between landowner and serf, between big industrial companies and labor. We have to change their social relationships in our country. And that is what social justice is about.